A trigger warning for this episode as it contains discussions surrounding gun violence. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the Ego Actus reading series, Dramatic Voices. This is Laura, and folks, we are nearing the end of our podcast series. This is our second to last play, and of course, we've got a new playwright and director on deck. This is for Gun, going live Sunday, March 24th. If I could have my playwright and director say hello and make a quick introduction. Hi, my name is Jennifer Holton. I'm the playwright of Gund. Um, hello. Hi, I'm Katrine Hilbe, and I'm the director of Gund. Welcome, Jennifer, and welcome, Katrine. It's a pleasure to have you both here, and I say Thanks, we jump in, right? Great. Let's get started. Uh, Jennifer, I think I would like to start with you, our playwright. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my first question is, uh, what brought you into the world of theater. And I think specifically for you, what brought you into playwriting? Well, um, actually, um, I'm a New York City native and I was um, acting on a soap opera from when I was six. No, excuse me, eight. And I, I decided I had had enough of that. And I went to college and I started writing and um, I started writing a lot of poetry and then I was able to um, get connected with uh, experimental theater companies um, downtown, um, Joe Chaikin and uh, uh, the Talking Band, etc. And um, I went down to Venezuela with them and started writing and, um, and then I just I started writing lots of plays and I, I had um, a bunch of them produced off off Broadway and I've uh, just continued, continued from there. And the way I met Katrine happily, who I adore and she's an amazing director and um, she's kind of my perfect match, which I'll talk about, you know, when, if you, if you ask, but um, just to add to how I got involved with Ego Actus, um, I was chosen to be part of the um, actor studio um the famous actor studio uh playwright and directors unit and so i've been a member of there for uh the past i guess six years and over that time i've gotten to um work with katrine uh i think three or four times on my work she really understands it and um brings um her really wonderful intelligence and kind of european sensibility which agrees with uh, my work um, and so, yeah, so that's that's me in a nutshell. Um, so Jennifer, I love that response. It seems like you've had such a journey, you know, very mm -hmm. well traveled. And I love how you bring up Katrine and how you both started working and how you got involved with Ego Actus. It's always mm -hmm. great to hear how a playwright just gets involved. Yeah, I, I actually didn't get to say how I got involved in the Ego Absolutely. Actus. Absolutely. So if I could just, um, just yeah. say that briefly. So I met Joan, who is also in the uh, playwright and director's unit at an at the actor studio um, party uh, anniversary party um, this past year, and we got to talking. And she asked me, um, she had seen uh, this play, uh, which I've um, revised for this ego actus reading, and deepened it. Um, but anyway, she asked me if I would send her a play. I told her I was really interested in this issue of gun violence at the moment. Um, and so I sent it to her and then naturally, um, when she chose it, my, my, um, the director that I always want to work with is Katrine Hilba. So, um, she came with me and we started working at Ego Actus on this project. I love it. I think it's great when you see that kind of, um, connection. I, I find that with all of the playwrights and directors I've worked with. Uh, collaboration is a big part of this, right? Outside of mm -hmm. just the series itself. It's how you work together on a play or a musical or a project. So, uh, Katrine, what about on your end, your journey from 
you know, where you started, how you got involved in the theater, uh, specifically directing and, and your journey with Jennifer. <laughs> well, if I answer all of these things at length, <laughs> uh, we'll be here by, we won't end until the series started. started. <laughs> um, I, I, I was born in the U.S. and, but grew up in in Europe in uh, a tiny country named Liechtenstein, which is wedged between Switzerland and Austria. And so I was raised in sort of the Germanic uh, theater culture. So I started uh, in opera. That's my home base, so to speak, or was my home base. And that is also where in the U.S. the the beautiful term Euro trash comes from, is that <laughs> I realized that a directing was a thing. I grew up in a village this, you know, of 5000 people. So while I went to the theater almost every night in high school and I was an usher, uh, I didn't even know that uh, a job like directing existed. So uh, so that took a while. <laughs> So I'm not going to bore you with how I found that out and why I wanted to do that. But uh, I really started in opera in Europe. And for the first 10 years of my career, I was assistant director of opera and then um, directing. And I moved to New York on an artist's grant over 20 years ago now. And that's when I started getting into directing straight theater. Um, and about five years ago... Um, an actor that I, I've worked with and very much enjoy working with, Nelson Abedin, um, asked me and proposed uh, that I join the Playwright Directors Unit of the Actors Studio. And that's when I met Jennifer. And she asked me to direct one of her plays for the PDU readings. And what I love about Jennifer's work is that she's not, she's not interested in what I with no disrespect, but what I term couch plays, sort of the traditionally family mm. drama play or the the well-made play, um, for which I also, I think it's a wonderful genre and I have no interest in it. Um, and Jennifer has an incredible grasp of poetry and of language and of uh emotional constellations of people and between people mm -hmm. and it's not about a realistic setting or a, you know a, a naturalistic setting it's really about the inner life yes there's story but it's it's more about the emotional reality and what characters are going through and that there's often a tie-in into our, what our society is going through, which is also something that I, 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 I'm I very, very interested. As a theater maker, I think we as theater makers, be it writers, directors, actors, we comment and we tell stories about our culture and about our society. And in a way, it is a political act, whatever we do. And I do feel that uh, Jennifer, in her work, is has a very similar aim and a similar outlook. And uh, I think that's why we also sort of gravitate towards each other um, a lot. So this is just sort of a convergence of many streams. Mm. Nice. I was just going to just say something about Katrine, which, I, which is very um, important to me and um, our connection as writer and director is that she is very sensitive and aware to what I'm trying to do. And she also, and this is something that's fairly rare, I think, for, um, for people, I think, is that she's also really able to call me on things when they're, when they're, when she, under, she understands that she understands things about what I'm trying to do. And for example, with the gun issue, there are many, you know, obviously in my world, perhaps m mostly people are, are coming from one direction, which would be, um, you know, more gun uh, regulation, et cetera. But 
in the play, for example, in my first draft, one that was never performed, there were some preachy elements to it and things that we've that we've heard before. And um, and so when you're researching something like I do before I write, you kind of you catch things, you don't catch things. But Katrine, because she is so smart um, and and so sensitive and also, you know, we work together so well, is able to say to me, I, I don't like this. I think you can do better. Or I think this is something we've heard before, or this is something that is not needed in the play, and um, and I've I really more than any other director I've ever worked with, you know, I I really feel because she understands what I'm trying to do so well, and she's so intelligent and articulate, and worldly, um, that I I listen to her, and um, and very often not every single thing, but very often take her note and. Um, and it makes the play better. So I just wanted to add that about her. Uh, Jennifer made a strong point. This is a social activist play. And when we heard it out loud, we had the reading and the feedback. I at, was, the act, at the actor's studio. At the actor's studio, yeah. yeah, the playwright director's unit. And I thought, no, that's not where the power of this play lies. The power of this play is in its exploration and imagining possible coping mechanisms, some that are realistic and some that are much more uh, strange or odd, surreal, <laughs> yeah, surreal. <laughs> but it takes the, the audience on a journey and through an exploration of this, this grief and trauma. <laughs> That's so true. And it's also that thing when you're writing and the play is just, the play is leading you. You're not trying to force it into, into a position. The characters are alive and they're leading you to their places, to their natural places. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love the perspective. I love how you ladies just kind of take the journey of not just how you got started, but how you work together and mm -hmm. how you tell this story. And actually you, you've already started to answer my second question. So I would love to continue it as a, as a conversation. Um, so what was the journey with gun specifically, right? Let's talk about a lot of the major inspirations you you're touching upon the process itself the challenges behind it uh working with the actors preparing them to tell this kind of story i would love to hear further insights about that um jennifer i think since you're our playwright i would love to start off with you okay um thanks um so basically um gun I, as an as a, as a playwright as a writer, I I do comment on society and and um, hopefully not in too too much of a heavy handed way, but in in my own understanding of it. Um, so for me, when I started to see when we all see you know what's happening with the with the mass shootings, particularly um, with school shootings. I'm a mother. I have two sons. Um, and it was, it was unbearable for me to listen to the parents, to look at the other children, to look at the other teenagers. Um, first, uh, the, the shooting in Connecticut with the little one, little first graders, that horrible Alex Jones, who said that it didn't happen and they were crisis actors. And then the Parkland shooting in Florida and which which um, begat the March for Our Lives um, uh, march in Washington, D.C. I think it was in 2019, I'm not sure, which my husband and I went down to. But anyway, um, there was no way that I could just, you know, oh, I'm going to write about blah, blah, blah. You know, this was my, um, this is what I had to write about. Now, the way to do it is to make it original without sounding preachy, which I which I did, um, I did pick up um, some uh, 
phrases, et cetera. It's hard to explain exactly, but but I really care about this subject. And I really care about it from the point of view of, as Katrine said, the unconscious of what this does to our society. And not just like, you know, the fear that little children go to school and have to actually be scared that that they may be in a, a shooting scenario. I my teach my son is now a teacher and I bought him I purchased for him a um a thing so that on the I bought it on the internet so a shooter is blocked from coming into his classroom. Um, in addition to that, the Uvalde situation where those little kids in in Texas were schooled for their whole lives on what to do if a shooter comes into their school. And what did they do? The exact thing they were supposed to do, which was which was shelter in place, call 911, all the drills that they, they had gone through their whole lives. And they're only like eight or seven. And so that's, and then to have all those police and soldiers sh sh come show up and not do anything sit there for hours waiting while the shooter is killing them inside it, it's unbelievable mm -hmm. and so i'm angry about it and um i'm trying to do something about it in my own way with these fantastic actors i'm working with and this fantastic director and um I, I'm I I'm doing it in a way that I think zooms into people's feelings, not so much their their outward um, angers, but their inward feelings. So now I'll let my beautiful director speak. <laughs> uh, I think one part of your question, uh, Laura, was about how we work with the actors. Since we haven't done a production yet uh, together, but uh, uh, in the developmental process, Jennifer has very specific ideas about casting. So for the most part, I take a bad seat on that. Usually I'm much more involved uh, mm -hmm. in casting. Uh, with Jennifer, she has also, because she's an actor herself, uh, not only does she have a very um, strong ear about what she would like to hear and what she would like, what kind of actor she would like for um, the roles, but also she has an extensive network, as do I, over 20 years. But that's really where I say, you know what, you cast it to your heart's delight. Uh, for us, you know, until Jennifer asks, hey, could you please help out? And then I do. Because uh, because developmental of a, of a new work is just such a sensitive, sensitive thing. And it's if it were for a production, then it was much more the finished product and how. And then we would have to talk about much more strongly about my vision and how my mm -hmm, vision absolutely. and Jennifer's vision uh, and what I would like to highlight. And that means that we may have differing opinions about casting, which we would have to hash out. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in a reading context, I don't, I don't do that. It's not about me. It's not about my vision at all. It's really about where I think the play wants to go. And also, frankly, purely egotistically speaking, if the actors that Jennifer chose then don't work out the way she wants them to, it's <laughs> not on me. It's not because I said, oh, I think this actor would be perfect. But it's like, hey, baby, you know, we tried. Um, mm -hmm. Generally speaking, sadly, the, the, the topic of gun violence is, is one that nobody can avoid. And we're also in New York City where <laughs> nobody were castings like you know I'm a really uh second amendment activist mm -hmm. so everybody falls politically sort of on the side of being horrified at these shootings and and uh, wanting more gun control and background checks and there was one really quite pivotal mm -hmm. moment uh, at the last uh, uh when we read it at PDU scenes before the read-through 
I'm just just to bring home uh, that this is not an academic topic. Mm -hmm. As ensemble, writer, director, and actors, we don't shy away from the emotionality that that this triggers and brings up. And at the same time, it's not our job to cry on stage. You know, mm -hmm. if anything, we want to move the audience. In the end, yes, we hopefully are moved, but then we have to put that aside because our job is to move other people, not to indulge in our own uh, emotions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so in the end, I I often find myself saying please don't lean so much into the emotion of the text. Mm -hmm. you know, please pull back, let the words work their magic. You don't have to sit on them. It doesn't get more moving if you start crying. <laughs> you know? Right, right, good point. It's a good answer though, it's a good yeah. answer. And I think, yeah. you know, it's it's very tricky to have that balance, right? You know, working with a subject matter that's very intense and very personal, um, you know, for the actors, for you, for the audience that's witnessing it, and while and still trying to be a professional. I remember, mm -hmm. and this was the last series that I did with Ego Actus. It was a podcast series during the lockdown, and it mm. wasn't so much about gun violence. I believe it was a different topic. I think just a bit more personal. And again, it was brought up: how do you balance the emotion behind? something that's very emotion inducing while still mm -hmm. saying I am the storyteller though. I need to mm -hmm. make sure that my audience understands what I'm trying to say without losing myself in it. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a very fine line that you kind of have to walk across like a, like a trapeze <laughs> we can say. Yeah. Um, and you, you both have already begun to touch upon it, but uh, I think for my final question for both of you really is, what do you hope the audience gets from this from this story right when they go on the 24th to see this play to witness it to sit down and experience it what do you hope they they leave with really do you do you want to go first katrine oh uh, sure um since we're again we're in new york city the audience will be uh people from new york that means nobody will be in there and said, oh, I now saw this play. I now also think gun violence is a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. You know, up to now, I thought that's actually sounds like fun, but now I realize <laughs> it's not. No, that's not the, uh, that, that's no. Um, it's more that um, people, feel that there's so that there's not one way mm -hmm. to process grief and trauma there's not one way there are obviously better choices than others and one of the choices that one of the characters make makes lands him not necessarily in a good place uh but that people are highly individualized and you can't and what works for one person to move forward with their lives and to be able to move forward with their lives is not necessarily somebody else's. And to just get that freedom. And, and the beauty of Jennifer's script is that she puts into very powerful and also beautiful language coping and processing that is in itself extremely painful. Mm -hmm. And that that there's there can also be beauty from that mm. and meaning and meaning not in the cheap ways like everything has meaning no sometimes that's not a meaning you can ever get there is no message but to be able then find a way to seize life again. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And that that I think that people come out and say, wow, these characters, they, you know, those are incredible stories that 
we heard and and that there's a soothing quality to reflect back it's like whatever shit i am and how 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 messed up i feel and sad and terrified and and strange things i do it's okay because we all do you know we process the best we can and how we can that's cool yeah. i i would just add that's that's all beautiful and i agree with everything you said um and you know the other thing i would just add a little bit of is that the play does represent or does speak to the other side and um one of the characters um when i say the other side i mean um people that are more perhaps conservative um i do think it's not just a play that that comes um wow 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 guns you know and um and so i i would like to think that the audience would come out not just moved but they would possibly be moved to to do something um i'm thinking about possibly trying to um to make this into a short film um with the intention of of maybe bringing it to schools maybe bringing it um around so that so that students can express their feelings their fears their um you know it, it's 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 a societal problem and um and it you know in terms of laws and everything there are things that can and can't be done and uh so you know i i um it's not an anti-second amendment play but it's a play that is definitely um anti-hurting innocent people because you want to make money from guns so um anyway i'm i'm really grateful for this talk and for being here in katrine and and uh and and for you laura and and for ego actus this is this is really great um so thanks Okay. It's very powerful, ladies. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Gund uh, premieres March 24th for Ego Actus's reading series, and tickets are free. Uh, donations are always accepted, but if you want to learn more, you can go to egoactus.com. That's E G O A C T U S dot com. Jennifer and Katrine, thank you very much for your time and your passion. Thank, Thank you, you so Laura. much, Laura. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. That was